Hey, it's uh, Benjamin Ray with another edition of Sustainability Live TV. I've got Tony back here with me. It's great to see you again. Great to see you again, too. Looking forward to 2021. Woohoo! 2021. I mean, you know, it's been an incredible year, an incredible year, one like we've never seen. And going into the new year, there's a lot of trepidation. You know, it's just another date. It's January 1st. It's 2021. But I think that there's a lot of I've seen a lot of optimism, a lot of innovation, but I've also seen a lot of worry about what's going to happen. Is the world going to change? You know, there's there, there are conflicting views. And on this show, you know, before we talked about really how to kind of move forward in planning. And that's what I'd like to talk about today is planning and taking action for 2021. So not only to set targets and give the viewers some real pra practical knowledge and steps that they can take to set targets, but not only to set them, but to achieve them and then sustain them. That's really the important part of this conversation. And what I've seen the past six months is some incredible growth in three areas. And one is collaboration, communication, and creativity. And what I'd like to do is talk about all those as they apply to business, health and wellness, and relationships. And I know that you as a leadership coach get into all those areas and a big part of that is mindset. And so if we could kind of weave in some themes about how if you change your mindset and, and use those themes of collaboration, um, creativity and communication can really level up in all those areas and achieve and sustain your goals for 2021. Well, my personal experience over this last year is like me, like everybody, got hit hard. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie or, or try to give a, a dream scenario of, oh, I had a perfect life this year. Like I, I wasn't able to see my family when I wanted to see them. That was a big thing for me. And um, I, I, I lost some clients and I had to pivot. I had to move forward. And like most of you out there had to, I know we all hate this word pivot. But it's like when I'm a martial artist, right? So if I'm in a fight uh, and, and I think too much about the situation at hand as it happens, it's already over. Hmm. I have to roll with the punches. I have to move. I have to adapt. I have to think of a different strategy. And that's the way we've had to look at 2020 is you're in the moment. You don't have, you know, if you really want to move forward, you have to adapt and overcome, even if it's not perfect, done is better than perfect. And just move forward, make mistakes, be prepared to make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, because the more mistakes you make, the faster you move forward. And you have to learn also that maybe going into yourself and hiding from everybody is the last thing you should do. You should actually open yourself out more. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially how we met Benjamin. You know, mm -hmm. we, we opened ourselves out more and it's, it's it's been amazing what's happened. You know, it's one of those things that w w when you have a, a skill or a gift like you have with these podcasts and with your own experiences, it's, you know, share it, highlight other people. So you're, you're what we used to call in the wealth dynamics scenario, a star. You're amazing at bringing out the, the qualities of other people. Oh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. And it was, you know, uh, I'll go back to our first conversation that you and I had. It was a couple months ago, and we only talked for 15 minutes. And you asked me some questions that, that pulled out of me some something that was already there, but I didn't really, I couldn't really articulate it, connected the dots, and now we're here today, you know. And so we have really, I, I have applied those three elements in my own life through the collaboration. I mean, you're halfway around the world, you're in Dubai. I never would have met you probably if it weren't for this. Um, communication, we've talked numerous times just about leadership principles, health and nutrition. You know, I watch all your videos and you give amazing tips for people. And in fact, that's how I first found out about you was just watching you do martial arts, doing sit-ups, doing whatever those were. And that really attracted me to watching those and following you and then creativity you know, this, the communication and the collaboration has sparked a lot of creativity in, in my brain really about, you know, 
what's the path for path forward not only for me but everybody in the world in this situation about what do we do now so thank you again for for opening all of those up to me in that very brief call well one thing i can say and thank you for for being part of my life now it's one thing i can say is that when your back's against the wall sometimes you've you've just not got any more choices than do or die hmm. and that's when sometimes the most valuable creativity can come to life mm -hmm. you know we, we uh, w whenever i learned marketing many years ago they used to call it the gun to the head scenario so if you had only two choices the guns to the head you don't have time to think off into the cosmos and think about all these multiple scenarios you just have like what's the best thing that can happen from here and suddenly some of those uh, things that you are thinking of marketing, some skills you might have had that you had an internal fear about, suddenly just go, boom, I'm going to give this a go. Hmm. Because what have I got to lose? I'm already back against the wall. What have I got to lose? And I think everybody that's watching this, if you have a gift, a skill, or a passion about something, you should pursue it. You know, obviously you have to take care of your day to day if that's still controllable. But if it's not, then you've got nothing to lose. I mean, now's so, the time. If there ever was a time, time, ever was a time, you know, to have your back up against the wall for what's happened in the world, now's the time. So let's let's go into business now with collaboration, communication, and creativity. And and let's give some practical, I guess, tips for if you want to start a business. You know, I mean, we can say do it now you know if you would look out 12 months and work backward what are some practical tips that you could give someone to use their network to use creativity to lean on others to collaborate to get that business going what are some ways that people can start that so first thing i would suggest is your business idea your passion your you know whatever it is you're wanting to pursue you need to understand, is there a market there to make it worthwhile to pursue? So something very good for this is Google Trends. Mm -hmm. Look in Google Trends and mix and match keywords. Also YouTube, Let, let's say it was holistic therapies to heal chakras. Now I'm just using something that's completely out there, but there's people making a lot of money at this and they're very good at their job. And if you Google Trends this, and if you look it up on YouTube, there's enough evidence to show that there's a, an abundance of people working at this. And if you find there's an abundance of people working at this, there's a market. Mm. All you have to do is then research that market and see where, where do I fit into that market? You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to let it overwhelm you in such a way that they might have more experience than me or something like that. You just have to look at, well, can I look at somebody that's already doing well and can I either match them or can I do better? And that's it. Well, that's for, it and for Google Trends, you know, if, if, if any of you don't know what that is, uh, you know, you can type in, I think it's Google.trends and yeah. then you can put in five keywords or phrases and it tells what the search volume is for those phrases in different parts of the world. So wherever you live, you can see if people are searching for that and you can see if there's a high demand for whatever you would like to do. And that's a very good way. And you may say, well, I live here in Denver, but what the services that I wanna provide are very much in demand in Dubai or in China. And so you would gear your program not to a local you know, SEO program, you would do it online and you would market to the people there who are searching for your services rather than me just saying i'm going to promote this to the world because nobody here would want what i want so that's an extremely good way to start to see even to to develop your messaging around your marketing but it, tony you're right it is a great place to start just to get an idea of really the volume and if anybody's going to buy that and then you can also see articles written so you can see press releases you can see who's doing what you can research the companies and and pretty much have a, a business laid out with the plan by looking at what the competition is doing. Absolutely. And sometimes you just need to look at the headlines of the highest performing posts. You don't even have to look at the videos or anything else. And if it's high performing, then you look at, well, how can I create content 
or give a solution in the same way to fulfill those same headlines. It's mm. as simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and if you've got that passion or that skill in that area, then and your back's against the wall and you were doing something else, and maybe you were scared, you had imposter syndrome about going out. Now's your time. You have nothing else to lose. Mm -hmm. You know, a mindset is the biggest blockage that you will have for that and like w when you actually realize that when your back's against the wall and it's fight or flight syndrome and you actually decide to fight and pursue that interest you're going to look back and go wow i wish i had done that 10 years ago five well, years that's, ago that's one thing that none of us want to do you don't want to be you know 90 or 100 or 110 and you're in your last days and you look back and you say i wish i would have done that I a wish life I would have regret is wasted. I mean, a you know, that, I've heard wasted. that that's one of the biggest, I guess, regrets that people have in their last days is they say, I wish I would have or I should have. And that's that's just, uh, you know, it kind of breaks my heart when I hear that because there's nothing stopping people other than mindset to be able to do it. I mean, you know, before I started businesses, there's all kinds of excuses around it. You know, I don't know enough people. I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have money. I don't have a network. But think about these, these issues here of communication. One, like on LinkedIn here, you can reach out to anybody. Send them a direct message. Introduce yourself. Collaboration. If I don't have a skill, I could collaborate with you and we could start a business, whatever that is. I mean, there are so many people around the world who are wanting to do similar things uh, together, but they may not have the same skills, which is great because then you can combine those skills to actually be really effective in that. They need to fit together. Mm -hmm. um, th this is why the star from Wealth Dynamics helps bring people together, look at their skills. So mm -hmm. you could have somebody very good in finance and very good in, let's say, admin, goes together with somebody excellent in leadership and excellent in creativity. Nobody's better than the other. They need to be paired together to work. Mm -hmm. So I think unequally, sometimes it can be people in the same areas, but they, they take it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that to be a big benefit as well. Yeah, I mean, different perspectives are great because you would rather learn those when you're sitting around the table working on your ideas rather than if you get a product out into the field and then you have that debate. It's much better to do it internally, you know? I've, I've had clients, my background's uh, in marketing as well, and I've had previous marketing clients that spent maybe $100,000 on MVP, minimal and viable product, when they could have spent $10,000, mm. all because they wouldn't swallow their ego mm. and open themselves up to be able to be criticized. Mm -hmm. You know, it would have cost them one-tenth of what it did cost them. So ego is expensive. That's for sure. A hundred percent. I've learned that. I'm sure we all have. <laughs> I think the more, the, the longer you're, you're in business working with people, the more you realize that, you know, you can't do it alone. You know, the lone wolf gets eaten. You know, I've done a lot of posts about that. And I, I think a lot of times as an entrepreneur, you think I've got to do it all. You know, I have to be the boss and I'm responsible for everything. Now you need, you need, to collaborate and you need to be vulnerable and you need to communicate and you need to support everyone around you. That's really what it means to be an entrepreneur, but doing everything on your own, whether it's admin, whether it's, you know, the CEO, whatever that is, they're all important, but you absolutely can't do it all if you want to succeed, uh, especially going forward in, in tomorrow's business. Absolutely. And I think it's important to have an open culture as well, because what I have seen a lot with, uh, let's say, higher level people I've been involved with, they blame everything on other people in their company instead of taking responsibility for what's happening themselves. Mm -hmm. it's, the same, it's the same with health and fitness. And it's very funny how there's a, a strong parallel there. I, I've trained people with do both different types of mindset. And the people that take responsibility for themselves are the people that go further with their health and fitness. Mm. And the people that blame it on other people, they don't because they need an escape. So one thing, and I'm, I might upset some people watching this here, but I'm just being real. I've been 25 years in the trenches as a coach. And the people that actually take responsibility for uh, their business and their health are the people that go further. 
Well, let's get into health, nutrition, and fitness then and apply those kind of collaboration, communication, and creativity and kind of bring this responsibility thing into it. So if you are responsible for your own health, wellness, and nutrition, what would that look like in these, applying it to these themes in working with other people or a, a routine, a program, a workout routine? Well, first and foremost, if you don't know something, hire somebody that does. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're gonna keep spinning the wheels. And I invest heavily into myself, heavily. So I do into knowledge and learning and coaching and mentorship. And I have to swallow my ego so many times. And do you know what? It's such a great feeling when you overcome that aspect and then achieve a new goal. And um, what I would say to most people here is make achievable goals, small goals, and then reach them each one at a time. Because and I've been guilty of this myself. We, we Sometimes we try to go, I want to earn a million dollars in six months. Yeah, man, it only took him 10 years. <laughs> How the hell do you think you're going to do that? Right. Well, I, want, I, I want to lose 40 pounds in uh, whatever, three or four months. That might have happened for one or two people, but it doesn't mean it'll happen for everybody. We are all different. We are all different shapes and sizes, mentalities, lifestyles everything else so what can you do that is going to be achievable for you set set your expectations high that's okay but expect to come halfway hmm. and as soon as you expect that halfway point is still progress then you will not stop because if you set all your hopes goals and your glory on that high level point and you don't reach it in my experience most people then they drop off I just, this doesn't work it won't work for me so blah, you're blah, saying blah. set those small achievable goals, celebrate the wins, and incrementally get better. And just exactly. by reaching those little goals, you will eventually reach your goal. And you'll be all the more stronger because you your confidence is building every single day by incrementally increasing your, you know, your productivity or or you know, nutrition, health, uh, weights, whatever that is, celebrate the wins. Absolutely. And be because I was very self-critical before and it's a case of once I reached the goal, I was happy for two seconds and then I was going for another goal. So I was very driven, but there was an internal, internal, uh, let's say, anger or I, I wasn't good enough. Hmm. Does that make sense? And I felt like I wasn't good enough because I hadn't I, my expectations were too high. And the moment I learned and I was doing more meditation and more internal work, I realized, you know what, I've achieved a lot and I'm happy with this. It's, I still am very driven to get to the next level, but I, I have to reward myself each time I get there because otherwise you just give up, you lose focus. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this happen multiple times with clients, friends, family, people I know. And it's, it's a scenario that it, your internal work will make your external life so much better. You know, you touched on something, the imposter syndrome, and I think that's that's part of this, if, if viewers don't know, but that's where you could say, I'm not good enough. And you look at your neighbor or somebody across the way or another right. trainer and you say, hey, I'm. why do they have what I don't have? And then you think you're not good enough. So if you could go into that a little bit about your experience, but also explain that, because I think that's pretty prevalent with a lot of entrepreneurs, but also people in general when they want to do something new. Well, you have to think of it very simply. Two people are trying to climb a mountain, right? So I'm this person here and that person's there. He's got a head start. I am never going to reach his level until I actually climb the mountain. So mm. he might be three months, three years, three decades, whatever it is away from it, but let's say I'm twice as much. So the more I try to compare myself to him, it's actually going to push me back down the mountain because I'm getting demotivated. Mm -hmm. I have to learn that until I reach the top goal the same as him, I cannot compare myself to him. And it's because, a really hard thing to do because yeah. there's always somebody who's stronger, has more money, better looking, lives in a better place. Always somebody's going to be in that position, no matter what. No matter Work through your strengths. Know what your strengths are 
because we all seem to know what our weaknesses are. And as a martial artist most of my life, we always tried to improve upon, let's say, some of our weaknesses. But when we find what our real strengths were, we just double downed on them. Mm -hmm. And would and you that, say that that's, would, would you recommend that for anything, whether that's business absolutely. or health, wellness, whatever that every, is? Every, everything in life. Now, of course, we all have things we want to improve on that, that let's say, are weaker. But we have to look at the time I spend improving upon that instead of just, maybe if I actually improve my strengths, it will fix it automatically. Hmm. So it will it may pull up some areas where you're exactly. weaker. So let, let's say a practical thing about that. Let's say I want stronger abs, but if I focus on my core, it's going to bring the abs up anyway. Exactly. So if you want stronger abs, but say you're a client, and you say, I want stronger abs. I want to do lots of setups and lots of plank. And I say, well, let's just say we do three things. More pull-ups, more deadlifts, more squats. Boom, that's it. You're going to have stronger abs. Hmm. So hmm. we work on increasing your weight in those three areas and your strength in those three areas. Automatically, you have stronger abs. Whereas if you focus only on stronger abs, you're actually weaker at the end of a time period. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So, you, you, so if we compare two of them over 12 weeks, you focusing only on stronger abs and me focusing on those three exercises, like you're going to be probably three, four times more powerful and stronger abs than the person just focusing on the core. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it completely makes sense. I think that's something most people overlook. Like you want bigger arms, you're just going to do curls. But yeah, I, I understand that that doesn't necessarily work. Well, let's go into nutrition now with these three elements. And, you know, how can you be, um, you know, kind of collaborate, be creative and communicate with nutrition in terms of working with other people, whether it's coaches or whatever it is to improve over the next 12 months? Collaborations for nutrition? Well, different uh, nutritional mindsets, because I, I come from a perspective of, you have to be able to have foods that you enjoy um, to be able to make it sustainable. Somebody else might be keto. Somebody might be, um, you know, Cambridge diet, you know, something else, right? Mm -hmm. I don't agree with them, but it doesn't mean they don't work. Mm -hmm. and, and the only reason I'm not such a big fan of some of those things is because I'm looking at something that's sustainable for life. Mm -hmm. But if I want to collaborate with somebody, I would look at somebody that, can supply the essential nutrients that is needed because you can still eat junk food as long as you get the essential nutrients. So why would be looking to quality companies that supply like greens products, omega-3, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, and multivitamins? Because mm. there's so many rubbish supplements out there in the world. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and most people don't know what to look for. So those elements, can you say that again? Zinc, magnesium, can you go through those again? So I would say primarily, most important, especially from my own experience, would be probiotics, omega-3, digestive enzymes, zinc, magnesium, and a, a good uh, uh, multivitamin. So keep it simple. So if you're not getting those, in your normal diet, you would supplement with those, but not just other supplements that have fillers or you can't pronounce them or anything like that. Exactly. And the quality of them as well, you, ha you have to learn, for example, like um, vitamin D can come in tablet or oil form, and oil form is more bioavailable for your body to digest it. And the labels might say it's stronger or it's X, Y, Z to give you bigger benefits, but it's it's having that knowledge to know, well, that doesn't actually get digested into my body unless it has certain additives to it. So that means that's like just basically going in one side, out the other. Mm -hmm. So that, so working with companies that are actually truthful and real about this, and you know, they provide the real supplementation that we need. You know, I've seen that uh, through a lot of these conversations is that the, the companies that are transparent in what they do, whether that's sustainability or ingredients, are the ones really that going forward will be trusted by users because they're just telling, telling it like it is. They're just saying, these are my ingredients. You know, they're not trying to fool people. And I think consumers are much more aware, you know, and I don't know if it's because of 
COVID or spending more time or just that there's been a big investment in self to say, look, I'm going to put stuff in my body, but I need to know what it is. So not just do we have more time, but people are way more concerned about just everything that they're doing in the world. And the more aware we can be, the better off we'll be overall to sustain whatever that is, whether that's nutritional supplements, whether that's a workout program, whatever it is, I think that's one of the keys to sustainability is understanding exactly what you're doing and how it affects your body. Absolutely. So, so informed knowledge and applied knowledge is power. Knowledge without action is useless. It is so, inaction, right? It actually, yeah, it actually hurts you. Uh, uh, inaction is actually inaction, but it doesn't help at all. Yeah, it's a backwards motion. Right, <laughs> right, I mean. right. And, you know, what I've seen is that people want to move forward now. You know, they want guidance. They want to, they want to do stuff. You know, there's this uh, pent-up energy to, to do stuff. And over the next however many months, three to six months, it's still, we're still going to be in this strange position. So in the world, you know, we've never seen anything like this. So now it's a, an amazing time, like we talked about, to do what it is that's your passion to follow that. Absolutely. And I think people are fed up being ripped off or misinformed or, you know, just fed full of the proverbial SHAT. It's just a case of people want to be given the advice they can follow. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Do that, you'll get results. Marketing, business, nutrition, health, you know, whatever it might be. They just want right clear directions to get there. And the smarter people in the world know that they need to look for this type of information. That, you know, if you're still thinking about magic pill products for any of those areas for your business and all, it's, it's not there. It's, mm. you know, this is the dream we've all been led to believe. And I've spent a lot of money and time going through stuff like this myself and been burned. And it's, it's like, if, if somebody can show something that's really there, I would severely doubt it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the magic bullet, the silver bullet, magic pill, you know, it's uh, it just takes a lot of discipline and hard work and, you know, the ability to follow your dreams. But I think what we found a lot of this uh, past year is that things aren't just going to drop in your plate either. You know, you yeah. have to believe in yourself and you have to go do what you want to do. And more importantly, do what you were meant to do. Do what you were meant to do in this world to help others, whatever that is. Absolutely. And like this last year has maybe forced a lot of people into that direction. You know, it's been a small thought in their mind because they've been so busy with their day to day. Mm -hmm. And then now suddenly, God forbid, they're, they've lost their job and now they're thinking, you know, could this work and then blah, blah, blah. So get out there, research it on Google Trends, look it up on Google. Is there a market there to, you know, to market your product? If there is, then whatever skills you don't have, find them to mm -hmm. help push it forward and start networking. Like you can't do, and no matter what you're doing, you cannot do it without a network. Mm -hmm. So you need to network. And that, that's where I think a lot of introvert type people are sort of, they're worried about connecting with new people, but it's, it's, it's you know, especially during lockdown and everything, it's been a lifesaver for a lot of us. Been right. able to connect with people all over the world and, you know, have conversations when people are around you, you can't even go next door, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. Well, you know, that's uh, the, the third, uh, you know, uh, part here is relationships. And I think that's a huge thing is to not be stuck in your place and in, you, in your house, you still have to maintain those relationships. So even though you can't go into your neighbor's house, you know, we couldn't gather for the holidays, you can't go to trade shows, whatever that is, you know, we can completely apply you know, the creativity, the collaboration and communication to networking, to relationships, to get out there and meet people. I can't tell you how many amazing people I've met over the past nine months just by reaching out and saying, hey, can we have a conversation? You know, what I used to say is, hey, can we get together for coffee? And maybe I would meet three or four new people a week. But now it's shifted. Now I'm meeting 20 new people a week just based on reaching out because I think that that collaboration and communication will spark creativity, whether it's just a simple conversation like you and I had first, or it's somebody that you would like to work with, or even providing services to, or or even in your own household, just you know, be open and communicate more. And those skills that you talked about that an introvert might not be comfortable doing that, 
the the advice really is that you just have to do it because it's there and you don't have to worry people will talk to you they they want to help people want to help that's one thing i've really found over the last year more and more people are actually once they get past their own fears more people they're real they want to help they want to talk about you know them and their ideas and there's as you say about creativity there there's sometimes when you've got two like minds talking about something you can just sort of one person can pick something out from his or hers experience about the others and then vice versa and then both come away going wow i never thought of it like that Mm -hmm. And if you're not having these conversations and networking, you're never going to find that out. No, it's just because a lot of times things will be going on in your head. You'll just be spinning around with ideas. And a lot of times you need to get that onto paper, get it onto a whiteboard. And that is not happening now. You know, so there are a lot of great <laughs> ideas. Um, so this needs to be the new whiteboard. And I encourage anyone watching this to reach out to as many people as you can and just start the conversation. Because if you don't, it's not going to happen. Well, the best ideas they say are in the graveyard because they've never been pushed out. Hmm. So let's change that and get your ideas out. Share with people. Be more open. Swallow your ego. And, you know, you chat to more people. And, you know, it's just a case of who knows what, like, what's the worst that will happen. You have a conversation and it doesn't go anywhere. You're still going to learn something about yourself. And then, boom, leave it. Yeah, you're going to learn. You're, you know, there are many sayings like that, you either win or you learn, you know, there isn't losing, failure is learning, you know, so many examples around that mindset. And that, you know, the, the mindset is kind of a term that people throw around a lot, but really, it, it is almost everything. You pretty much can do anything if you have the right mindset. Absolutely. I'm a firm believer in that, and a lot of people call me nuts for that, but I've achieved enough to back it up, so <laughs> it's one of those things, whenever the mind can see it, you can push it, you can at least push towards it, doesn't mean you'll always achieve, but you can move towards it. That's great. Well, let's, uh, let's give, let's see, what would be three then uh, recommendations in each area for the business, uh, health, wellness, and nutrition, and relationships that you would say that people should really focus on if there was one top for each thing, one top recommendation for each of those over the next 12 months, what would that be? Business, I would say, is there a market for what you are passionate about? What, what is you're involved in? Number one, if there's a market, then try to network with as many people as possible that are interested in that product. And then lastly, try to be genuine. You know, mm -hmm. try to help people. Don't try to sell everybody just to get sales. Actually think about those people that you can genuinely help. Mm -hmm. Don't feel that you need to take on customers just to make money because that's going to hurt you in the long run. Think about genuinely helping people. That's business. For health and fitness, do something that is achievable. Don't overexert yourself because mm -hmm. it's going to take away from your business. But equally, don't let your business life take away from your health and fitness because mm -hmm. it's all about that element of balance. You know, I, I've had a client before that had multiplied his business with the mindset stuff and the, the health and fitness increased energy that we did and then suddenly wanted to take away from um, the health and fitness. I go, no, that's the core element that's actually helping you. Mm. So please try and look after your health and fitness because, and it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. You can still eat the foods you want. Just manage your calories. Just as regards your fitness, get a sense of achievement out of it. Push yourself outside your comfort zone because that parallel will give you that strength to get through the hard times in business. And the biggest thing that I'm guilty of, because I was super strong on those other two, is relationships. Hmm. So that's your self-love. That's the time you give to your parents, your loved ones. And for, to be honest, for a long time, I was very guilty of being so focused in other two areas. And now that I've programmed into my week, time for a date night, time to speak to my mother and father, whatever it is, then when those times are blocked out, not th there's nothing going to take away from them because they're the bits that look after my internal element to give me that driving force to be able to focus on my health and fitness and to be able to focus on 
my business. Mm. So I hope that gives like a a sort of three sixty. Well, First it sure, of all, it sure helps me. Yourself. I'm going to be doing my you know planning over the next couple of days with you know look out twelve months uh, back into it really some achievable targets in all those areas. So thanks for giving those tips. I, I appreciate you being on the show once Thank again. You. And I uh, look forward to talking to you uh, uh, next time that we can get together. And as always, yeah, happy 2021, everybody. Yeah, happy, happy uh, 2021. Coming up a new year. Uh, make some progress. Achieve those goals. Celebrate the wins. And uh, you can reach out to Tony or me anytime through direct message here. And uh, have a great year. Okay. All the best, guys. Have a great 2021. Mm -hmm. Take care, Brent. Benjamin. See you soon, man. Yeah.